Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan, MSP. This is Ukraine War News Update, second part thereof for the 19th of April 2024. This is a military aid and equipment video. We'll, we're all we going to start with France before moving in to look at arguably much more important matters concerning what's going on in Congress. Uh, but let's just dip into a speech that Emmanuel Macron made uh, yesterday. Uh, quoted or excerpted here by French aid to Ukraine, worth following on Twitter. Quote, we are all in a race to produce more and also to win back some capacity from our partners. What we do for the scalp. Interesting. Uh, the context of that is a little unknown. So I, I wonder whether he's saying uh, we need to produce more in France and actually we need to be ordering more from France rather than, say, the US, talking about the the EU military strategy that came out recently that said, well, we're hoping to buy 60% of stuff from the EU, and that's what we need to sign up to. So you're, you're seeing the EU standing on its own two feet away from the US more, standing more ind independently. And that's what some Americans have been calling for for a long time, say, you need to spend more. OK, we'll spend more. But that money is staying in here. So actually, you might regret getting us to stand on our own two feet because we, it will come at the expense of uh, orders to the US military industrial complex. So interesting dynamic there that I've talked about before. Quote, we remain more united and determined than ever to support uh, for Ukraine for as long as it takes and as intensely as it is needed. And I like that. It's not just as long as it takes, like we'll give you half a teaspoon every second week and we'll do that until the year 50,000. Like, no, we will help you for as long as it takes, but also really intensely if, it, if that's needed. So we'll give you a lot, as much as we can. Um, uh, for as long as we can. The priority is very clear military support for Ukraine. And that includes, just a summary here, supply of ammunition, joint production of military equipment, cyber defence, mine clearance, border security, strengthening the ground air defence coalition with Germany. And back to quotes, each of us has a responsibility to make better use of our capabilities so that together we can be effective in supporting Ukraine. It's exactly right. I've talked about this previously. I, I've talked about how the UK should just forget everything else and, and spend billions of pounds on storm shadows. Just like you guys do the main battle tanks, you guys do uh, end law equivalents, you know, anti tank guided missile equivalents. We're just going to do storm shadow missiles because they freaking need loads of them. And if no one else is going to do them other than, say, France pr providing a couple of some, some cruise missiles, then, you know, we need to specialize. It's all about specialization. Uh, we also need, without delay, sustainable European instruments to strengthen our defense capabilities, including through the use of innovative financing channels. We're also unanimous in strengthening our sanctions against Russia, continuing to hamper its war machine and give priority to strengthen the fight against any evasion. That's evasion of sanctions, uh, closing loopholes. We must also target those who, on Russia's initiative, support destabilizing actions in Europe. Super important. There's more news on that coming out. Uh, uh, with Europe, I think, are putting an investig investigative task force together to look at um, information, disinformation campaigns and projects by Russia, particularly. Uh, long overdue, very long overdue, but good good move. Particularly in terms of manipulating information and interfering in our electoral process. So, so important. Uh, I, I meant to say, actually, on, on my video earlier when I was having a, a rant about Marjorie Taylor Greene and it, with regard to the conversation or the, the hearing with Timothy Schneider, is that you know, when Anton Kirishchenko then listed, you know, here are all the good things in terms of what Ukraine are doing or, or where they're going to be given aid coming through and people ramping up. And things are, you know, we talk about woe is Ukraine with regard to the US military aid package. But if that happens and if Europe is, is doing all the right things, then actually we can be somewhat confident going forward for Ukraine or about Ukraine. The concern is the political situation in both the US and the EU. We have this growing, um, I have this growing sense that things are fragile and unstable in both of these countries and it is largely due to disinformation campaigns of Russia.
It is incredible that you have people like Marjorie Taylor Greene outright, and we're going to go on to this in a second, outright spouting Russian propaganda and trying to trying to literally write Russian propaganda into US law, into US bills. Again, we'll come to that in a second. So it's so important that that is recognised and therefore it being, being recognised can be mitigated and that's what he's talking about there we're going to strengthen our ability to defend ourselves and to fight back and this is the whole point of the proposal that france was has made with several partners the baltic states poland and uh, the netherlands to create a new european sanctions regime against the actors of these destabilizations surface to air defense is absolutely key in the conflict and to countering russian aggression this is what has led us alone with it and with partners to deploy systems such as a sant which is the equivalent of the patriot Kratal and mistral uh, we have deployed, and interesting, so uh, we don't quite know the success of the SAMT against ballistic missiles. <clears throat> we know that Patriot Pack 3 is the best in the world. Well, we don't know that for sure because we don't know what SAMT can do. But it seems like Patriot Pack 3 is the best in the world at taking down that those um, hypersonic, possibly ballistic missiles. Okay, so there is news recently that Santi on board a French frigate or similar had taken down Houthi or Iranian or whatever uh, ballistic missiles over the Red Sea. And that's interesting. So actually Santi might have decent anti-ballistic capabilities. <clears throat> I just don't know where the Santi is in Ukraine. I presume it's around Kyiv and it is successfully taking down ballistic missiles. We just don't have the data. Um, anyway, we have deployed the full range of what we have to offer. It's very important that we deploy everything we can deliver. In order to help Ukraine defend itself, we have to do several things. First of all, we have to have these batteries, medium and long range missiles to neutralize the Russian reserves on the Ukrainian soil and the starting points of these attacks and also air to air defense system. The starting point of these attacks, they need to be able to hit the Russian air bases. Germany has more Patriot systems, and so they have delivered a third one. This is a very important decision, and I thank Germany and the Chancellor for it. The Patriot is a system that is much more shared by the Allies, and therefore there is a depth to provide missiles that are compatible with the system. In other words, you know, the Santi, even if I'm arguing it's as good as Patriot, talking from Macron's point of view, actually, because fewer nations use it, actually getting missiles for it and, and a large number of those missiles to be used is more difficult than can be done for Patriot. France and Italy have another system, SAMT, which is used by fewer operators. There is less depth of missile supply, the content of our specifics, and we use differently. Um, France, which has the nuclear deterrent, has far fewer systems available for itself. We have systems to secure our nuclear strongholds on French soil. What you have to understand with France, and I guess the same can be said about the UK, but it's really baked into the French military strategy. I would suggest going to and watching Perrin's video on France, French's, France's military strategy that he did. I remember listening to it last summer, I think. So it's, it's going to be a good uh, nine months old or so. Uh, he Perrin talks about how France's military strategy is absolutely built around their nuclear capability. Their military strategy is a nuclear strategy. And, and as a result, they have completely different setup of weaponry. Germany does not have nuclear capability, and so they've got loads more patriots. France is relying on the fact that people won't attack them because they're a nuclear power, and, and they, they use their defences differently, and it's all about defending nuclear power and so on and so forth. So that just explains a little bit why, why they have a completely different military setup, arguably, than, than other what you might think are as similar nations. Um, we have deployed, says Macron, what we could in Ukraine and Romania. We have deployed more Kratal and continue to work on that system. Conversely, we have a missile system, Scale PG, the cruise missiles for deep strikes, to complement the British Storm Shadow. We delivered the scouts while Germany could not deliver the Taurus for tactical and political reasons. Ooh, ouch. This is where Europe is useful because we complement... Oh, it's a good point here. We complement each other. So Germany can't do that, but we can. And therefore, you know, but Germany can provide pa more patriots and we can provide Santi because they have... So that that's the idea here. And I, I think actually that's well, well said. Germany supplies what it is most capable of and we supply what we are most capable of and because the scout missile is used by more partners and his characteristics are better adapted to the situation on the ground than the taurus 
uh, really good stuff there uh, from Emmanuel Macron. And I love the the level of detail he gives. So often with leaders of the world, there's you hide behind obfuscation and vagueness. And you can say that with regard to Schultz and Taurus. Well, actually, you've got Macron just being quite open here, saying, look, we're going to give everything we can. We've got expertise over here. We're trying to do this and we're working on that. Germany can't do that, but that's OK because Germany do this. Uh, and I, I like it. I just I love clarity and transparency. And I think Macron is saying the right things. He's being strong enough and rhetorical enough, also backing up with actions now. And it's all it's all moving in the right direction. So talking about patriots and particularly with, with regard to Germany, six patriot air defense systems could be supplied to Ukraine by NATO partners, according to the Chancellor of Germany. Now, there's been an awful lot, I think, of confusion over this due to, I think, some misreporting. Ukraine can possibly receive six more Patriot systems from partners. Quote, we have heard about seven additional systems. One of them is ours. We do hope to find six more in the context of NATO. And I have again used this opportunity in many negotiations to convey this, this opinion, said Olaf Scholz. Now, some people were then reporting this as Germany are going to provide seven uh, Patriot systems and whatnot. In fact, I think... Um, I should have had this up. I don't know where it's gone. But German Aid for Ukraine does indeed talk about this. Uh, we go to German Aid to Ukraine. He, he talks because of the misinformation about this. Um, if we pop down to here. So since reports are circulating, uh, that Schultz is supposed to have said that Ukraine could receive. So the idea that people are reporting that they're going to receive seven Patriot batteries. He says, I'm going to clear this up. All he said was it would be possible for several countries to hand over the batteries. He didn't use a specific number. He also referred to seven batteries requested by Ukraine days ago and said that one comes from Germany and he hopes that six more will be found. Furthermore, he had actively campaigned for this. When asked later whether he had already received any commitments, he simply said that he would not provide any information. That's all. So we can't be talking about Ukraine possibly getting so many systems based on what he said. In my interpretation, that's not what he said. It doesn't help to raise hopes unnecessarily and spread fake news. Ukrainians already have a hard enough time. I think that's well said there. So hopefully that gives you a, a bit of uh, clarity on, on what is still fairly murky. Amsterdam does not want to name the countries who, who refused Ukraine air defence systems, says the Dutch PM Mark Rutte. Quote, there is a limited number of Patriot systems in Europe. Many of them have already been delivered to Ukraine, but the Ukrainians need more. I cannot confirm the quantity because this is classified information. Mark Rutte was quoted by the media. He also added that each country should decide for itself what to do with the available air defence systems. Okay. Now moving on to what's going on in Congress. And it seems that Mike Johnson has found a backbone. I've long talked about how I think he knows deep inside his head what he thinks is the right thing to do. And actually, there's a lot of people now doing their analysis, concluding that he is actually really trying to do the right thing, what he sees is the right thing. And he's butting up against some serious Republican opposition from... We don't quite know how many, but the, but the problem is with those kind of politicians is they shout the loudest. And so you think that they represent more of the Republican Party than they really do. I've just listened to an absolutely brilliant uh, video. It's only 20 minutes long. Uh, I'm not going to go through any of it now, but it's um, it's through Midas Touch, but it's it's who are left leaning kind of pro democracy and therefore some people some well many will say pro democrat, but Denver Riggleman was a Republican um, Republican lawmaker and Adam Kinzer he might still be I'm not sure Adam Kinzinger was obviously a Republican lawmaker before he was kicked out for going against Trump. This discussion they have together, twenty minute discussion details some of the things that actually took place and what people's real opinions about Trump were behind the scenes and then how people just morph people didn't have the guts to stand up for him and in the end you just used to have used to have these these conferences these meetings where people would actually be taking t-shirts and caps up for Donald Trump to be signed like some gig or something like just not not a serious political um, symposium just insane but talking about and one I've spoken previously on about how he came into to uh, in the White House to speak to they had some meeting in the White House to speak about China and he is like no I, w I want to give 
Z Z Z T E, the Chinese telecoms company, I want them off the sanctions list because Xi Jinping just asked me to do a favor. And everyone's like, what? I mean, we're literally talking about like the threat of Chinese tech, and you're saying you want them taken off the sanctions list because he asked you to do a favor. And it's the and and is, Adam Kinzinger said, you think that. Trump would be different behind the scenes. Trump is exactly the same behind the scenes as he is in public. Just an absolutely fascinating insight from two people who are Republicans who very quickly, and they talk about the moment they realised that, oh my God, things are, things are going south here during the Trump presidency. Really, really fascinating, fascinating discussion that. Anyway, the, what how it has metastasized now is a schism in the Republican Party where you are now having people who aren't comfortable enough, confident enough, courageous enough to stand up to Trump, but there are people who want aid to Ukraine, obviously, and they, uh, they are looking forward, I think, to signing the bill and Mike Johnson's now finally given, I mean, seven months in the making, goodness, it's been a long time, but there is some hope that this bill will get through. And I'll, I'll come on to that in a second. And I think Mike Johnson is doing what he thinks is right. His rhetoric at the moment is pro-Ukraine. And the, what he says is a recognition that he knows the calculation, the political calculation, as in the geopolitical calculation over there, not his own political calculation. He understands that conflict in a way that someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene simply doesn't. So him and Marjorie Taylor Greene are actually two very different, very different people. Like, yes, he's a Christian nationalist and, and his his um, theology might be driving a lot of his politics, you know, in, in terms of pro-life, abortion, etc., etc. But but he hasn't, he hasn't sunk himself entirely into the the kind of MAGA world in a way that other people have, even though he was called MAGA Mike, right? So anyway, Democratic Party of the US House of Representatives said that they would support Speaker Mike Johnson's series of bills that includes aid for Ukraine, Israel and other priorities in the upcoming vote, according to Bloomberg. So that's really good. Hakeem Jeffries, a minority um, uh, speaker, if you like, for the for the Democrats has has is, is going to, I think, pull through to support the or to, to make the Democrats support the aid bills. We're going to do what's necessary to make sure the national security bill gets over the finish line, House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries said. It's not Johnson's for this this is such a good quote here. It's not Johnson's foreign aid package. It's America's foreign aid package in terms of meeting our national security needs. So we must not then think that Johnson is some kind of hero for getting this aid bill. This is this this aid bill is not really much different from the Senate bill that he refused to to pass to to put to the floor. And so the the Democrats have wanted this kind of package for seven months. And if it finally gets through, it's not Johnson's aid bill, and it's not him that should be lauded for it. Even though he is, he's just been this keystone that has eventually done the right thing. But meanwhile, absolute nut jobs like Marjorie Taylor Greene and other ones are spouting insanity and are trying to amend bills accordingly. This is insane. So Putin's wing of the Republican Party has now requested around 100 amendments to the Ukraine bill that sound like they were written in a Russian troll factory. They include terms like Ukrainian Nazis, biolabs, Nazi Azov battalion and more. OK, let's read what certain ones have done. So it tells you who has done it here. Ogles from Tennessee uh, prohibits the use of funds to. This would be an amendment if it if it was if it got through. It, the Ukraine aid bill would prohibit the use of funds to arm, train, or otherwise assist the neo-Nazi Azov Battalion, its successor, the Third Separate Assault Brigade. Third Separate Assault Brigade are incredible, or any other successor organisations. You would only say that. If you have been passed that information by the by the Kremlin or by sources that are getting that stuff from from Russian propaganda, this is direct Russian propaganda being att attempted to be uh, put into a U.S. congressional bill. It's insane. Marjorie Taylor Greene requires all this bill requires should require all members of Congress who vote in favor of this act to conscript in the Ukrainian military. What? So if you vote yes, you then have to go and sign up to Ukrainian military. She seriously wants that in the bill. Green, again, two more. This bill should prohibit funding until Ukraine stops persecuting Christians. 
when we've seen data to suggest it's entirely the opposite. It's the Russian occupied territories where Christian perse persecution has taken place. It's just insane. She also wants prohibiting uh, funding until Ukraine closes all bio laboratories, of which there is evidence of precisely none. This is this is the 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 propaganda that was kicking around at the beginning of the war two years ago. That no one believes this anymore, apart from oh my goodness, someone trying to make law in the U.S. trying to to put bills, vote on bills, and she's just this disinformed. Norman from South Carolina, also supported by Perry from Pennsylvania and Biggs from Arizona, says strikes the entire bill text, an amendment to strike the entire bill text. OK, brilliant. But there's more. And it's just as bad. Gosar from Arizona. Ugh. Prohibits the use of any funds for Ukraine until 90 days after the president has initiated peace negotiations between Russia and Ukraine. We'll give you funds. But only after you you've capitulated to Russia, reduces every dollar amount to the bill in the bill to zero. Well done, Marjorie Taylor Green. Two more green ones prohibits funding until Ukraine Ukraine bans abortion. <sighs> green prohibits funding for the Azov Battalion. Green prohibits funding until Ukraine turns over all information related to Hunter Biden and Burisma. Jesus wept. But there's more. More amendments. Green prohibits funding until former actor Vladimir Zelensky, not president, former actor. This is disgusting and disrespectful. To someone who's fighting, who's leading his country, two years into an invasion by a superpower. But no, we're not going to give aid until former actor Vladimir Zelensky resigns as president of Ukraine. Again, green. Funds made available by this act shall be offset by the salaries of members who vote in favour of it. Not only do you have to conscript to fight in Ukraine, but your salary should also uh, um, be, be offsetting this funding bill. Green. Prohibits funding until peace negotiations begin between Russia and Ukraine. And green again. Directs the president to withdraw the US from NATO. Holy crap. Um just absolutely incredible incredible what's interesting is that um jared moscovich has also added seeing all this he is is trolling back so Repub uh, democrat uh a uh, i think he's brilliant a, a democrat lawmaker has added the amendments that the um uh, oh i'm going to have to go and find the exact text now here it is, and it is delightful. Uh, so let's read it to you. This one's probably the best one down here. So amendment, this is from Jared Moskowitz of Florida. At the end of the bill, before the short title, insert the following. Uh, resolved that 403 Cannon House office building be renamed the Neville Chamberlain Room. In other words, Neville Chamberlain, the British uh, appeasement, uh, sort of infamous for his appeasement of Hitler at the beginning of World War II, renames... Her, her her room um her office or uh, brilliant the neville chamberlain room and then trolls uh, with this at the end of the bill before the short title insert the following uh, whereas representative marjorie taylor green ga14 has repeatedly attempted to block aid to ukraine empowering vladimir putin's unlawful violation of ukrainian sovereignty and territorial in integrity whereas representative marjorie taylor green ga14 has reposted information from the strategic culture foundation a russian-based disinformation and propaganda channel that has been sanctioned by ofac so she she that's where she's getting her information from in the sense of congress that Representative Marjorie Teddy Green, GA14, should be appointed Vladimir Putin's special envoy to the United States Congress. Ouch. So nothing about changing the bill and stopping funding or it, but you, you know, we're gonna change this if we'll have an amendment to this bill that she becomes a special Putin envoy and that her building, her office is renamed the Neville Chamberlain Room. I I think it's brilliant because, you know, goodness me, that woman is dangerous. Okay, right. Moving on, though, the good news is that, that the Rules Committee, and it, there were some 
worry because the Republicans are have a majority in the Rules Committee. And there was, there was a bit of a worry that, that because there are a number of people on the Rules Committee who are MAGA, that they wouldn't get through the Rules Committee. Um, but it has been advanced. Uh, so U.S. House Rules Committee vote nine to three uh, to advance Speaker Johnson's National Security Supplemental Bill to the House floor. It will be taken up on Saturday. It includes the Israel Bill, the Ukraine Bill, the Indo-Pakon Bill and the Repo Act sanctions and, on, on Iran and TikTok and divestment bill. Good news. And in fact, this is really good. The Axios reports House Democrats made an extremely rare break with modern political norms on Thursday to rescue House Speaker Mike Johnson's foreign aid package. Four Democrats on House Rules Committee voted with five on the panels uh, of with with five of the panel's establishment uh, Republicans to advance package of four bills to votes on the House floor. So this is good, good news there. Uh, the House Rules Committee uh, reported here to, to, to do that. So this is being widely reported um, and it's unusual that Democrats would cross party lines in, in such a way. Um, so uh, we then get on to hopefully the bill goes through. Hopefully there's enough... Demo I think the Democrats... It would be interesting if, if there's unanimity with the Ukraine bill. That tells you where the Democrats are at. Uh, and it's going to be very, very interesting to see how many Republicans vote on Saturday for the Ukraine aid bill. Um, this, this came. This is a comment I referenced yesterday. Uh, Pala Rasmussen here says I had copied this from a comment on both of the fifth column. That's another YouTube channel. Very good. Uh, his video, the roads with with Bo episode, might be fake, but could well be absurd. So absolutely no idea of the provenance of the the quote but a guy has written i work as a contractor for the military we are sitting on four million artillery shells that we are going to dispose of but by law we cannot send them they have to pay for transport um the ua cannot get them without the new aid bill that many shells of that type would swing the war to the ukrainians in six months things that make you scream so here you've got a guy that is a military contractor just just you know, around all of these military shells, just, just getting so frustrating. Uh, Germany's Minister of Economic Affairs and Climate Action and Vice Chancellor Robert Habeck opened the new production facility of quantum systems in Ukraine. With a new production facility, quantum systems wants to be able to produce up to a thousand drones, including spare parts per year. The quantum systems is a German manufacturer of drones which supplies high quality vector reconnaissance drones to Ukraine on behalf of the German government and is also contributing by, to, by for example, donating 100 Trinity drones. Now, this is great news. These are high quality drones. They aren't sort of FPV drones that you you get and you th attach a, an explosive to and, and chuck it against a, a uh, an infantry fighting vehicle, or whatever. These are, I think, much higher quality, um, more long distance reconnaissance drones that the Ukrainians obviously need. And to have a factory in Ukraine building them is fantastic. Speaking of factories, not one, not two, but three ammo factories this far have caught week. Uh, the third one has suffered an explosion this week. Now it makes two in the US, so another one in the US um, and one in the UK. Is it a coincidence that also there were two Russian saboteurs arrested in Germany and Russia's a long track record since 2014. They've blown up six um, facilities in Ukraine, two in the Czech Republic and one in Bulgaria. So the Arsenal uh, factory in Bulgaria that was creating uh, Soviet era ammunition for Ukraine was, uh, there was an explosion there and that was done by the FSB. So the FSB have got four. There are nine places that they've blown up that are similar to these and we've seen three fires in the last week in these factories in the UK and the US. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe just be. I don't know how anomalous fires are in munitions factories. All right. The first um, F-16 multi-role fighter jets with trained pilots are to be delivered to Ukraine by early summer. This was announced by at a briefing uh, in Brussels by the Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo. Right, this is really good news. So uh, today, Belgians announced two things: they've discovered a network of Putin's goons bribing EU politicians and rushing F-16s to Ukraine in the next forty days instead of twenty twenty-five. Wow. Um, so that's really good news from uh, de Croo. In fact. Uh, I thought I had a direct quote from De Croo, but I don't. Uh, it, may, it may be in my geopolitical video, but the really good news from Belgium. Now, Slovakia, with its change of 
uh, Prime Minister and President to be pro-Russia is an interesting top lead infographic. Slovakia has provided Ukraine with military aid, the cost of which is comparable to a third of its defence budget, although it did a lot of that before Fitzo came in. Uh, but now, because of the pro-Russian Prime Minister and President, Ukraine can only buy weapons from Slo Slovak companies. Uh, so recently, Slovaks voted for a pro-Russian president. Uh, an earlier pro-Russian politician became the Prime Minister. Since October 2023, Slovakia has not provided military assistance to Ukraine, but the government has authorised contracts for private companies to supply weapons to Ukraine. So military aid to Ukraine um, from 2022 to 2023, 0.7 billion euros. Comparison of aid with the defence budget, 32.1%. Uh, Comparison of aid with nominal GDP in 2022, 1.8%. Um, share by provide so obviously that's going to be somewhat different now. Uh, share by provided arms countries stockpile aircraft 100%, howitzers 41.7%, IFEs 11.7%. Planned aid in 2024, zero billion euros. Only private companies continue to supply weapons to Ukraine. Almost 100% of their products for the next two to three years have already been sold to Ukraine. This is about 150,000 shells and 20 Susana 2 self-propelled guns. Um, so all the available MiG-29s went uh, in, in 2023. Um, yeah, structure of military aid, 60,000 shells. 30 infantry fighting vehicles, 13 MiG-29s, uh, 10 pieces of artillery and 2 air defence systems. Uh, Slovak Prime Minister said weapons only prolong military conflicts that have no military solution and will lead to hundreds of thousands of additional deaths. Yeah, if you include Russia in that, but if Russia aren't going to stop producing weapons and are still going to use their weapons in U U Ukraine, then Russia will just murder all of those Ukrainians. So either you have no weapons, like you say... Like, everyone has no weapons, or everyone has weapons. You can't say, well, Ukraine shouldn't have weapons because it prolongs the war. Well, then it will expedite a genocide. You absolute muppet. Ukraine, while short on new Western surface-to-air missiles, might have hundreds of missiles for its old S-200 batteries. It's increasingly apparent that any big Russian Russian jets that approach within 150 miles of the front in Ukraine are at risk of interception, according to Forbes. Now, this is on the back of possibly being an S-200 system that took out the 222 M3 bomber this morning. That would be incredible if an old uh, Soviet-era system has been adapted to be able to effectively take out Russian air, airframes deep into Russian territory. Now, here's a video of a Russian counter thermal raincoat, which have become more important with the widespread use of thermal optics and UAVs drones with thermal cameras. Uh, going to be seeing, I think, more of these going forward. These allow you to remain somewhat invisible to thermal imagery, um, particularly at night. Uh, because it reflects heat away or, or doesn't give you a heat signature. Anyway, he's wearing that, um, there you go, that thermal coat. Very useful for snipers, as you can see there. That's a Russian with it. And then lastly, British government's released satellite pics of a Russian port of Norosisk after a series of defeats in the sea. Uh, the bulk of the Russian Black Sea fleet had to evacuate from Sevastopol to withdraw back to Russia, making Novorossiysk basically their new HQ. The satellite pictures indicate that Russians have expanded this port for loading operations of their warships. In this case, the loading of the Admiral Grigorovich class frigate can be seen. Unlike Sevastopol, which is part of Ukraine, Novorossiysk enjoys the advantage of being in Russian territory and is therefore shielded from the usage of Western weapons such as Storm Shadow, Scout PG or Atakum, which is too far away. Though Ukrainians have already managed to hit their ports even with their own weapons, this instance proves the illogical constraints by Western partners. This is legitimate target, a legitimate target, and it must be terminated just as any other target. So that's an advocation for advocacy for striking Novorossiysk in Russian territory with Western uh, weapon systems, although it is out of range of the ones previously mentioned. This is the uh, evidence that they have got the loading capabilities now in Novorossiysk. So the Black Sea Fleet can fire cruise missiles from uh, from uh, their port of Novorossiysk or th those those ships and submarines can get loaded up there and then go out to the Black Sea. One of the theories as to why the Russians haven't been firing from their Black Sea fleet for months and months and months is they pulled it out of Sevastopol due to Sevastopol being so 
uh, vulnerable. And that had the loading systems for the missiles onto those vessels. Well, now it appears that they have built or moved the loading systems to Novorossiysk. So that means that we can expect more cruise missiles to be shot going forward. Anyway, that's enough from me for this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. Really appreciate your support. Take care and speak to you soon.